Hello and welcome to a new episode of the FFTCG Developers Showcase Matches. Uh, I'm Tim from Final Fantasy TCG Europe. I'm here with RB from Final Fantasy TCG North America. Hello. And today we are taking a look at a Mono Water List by Shikadi, which you might have heard about from the World Championship this or last year. I mean, last or the year before. <laughs> Yeah. I'm actually really excited about this deck. I I love Cecil and Rosa as a combination um in the card game. I mean in the game as well, but I think they're really cool together in the card game. Um the way they play off each other and then even having Theodore um as their kid to like <laughs> bring into play if you have both of them. Yeah. Um I I love that whole dynamic, that thematic to the cards. Um, so I'm excited to see what this deck does. It's um, just a great, um, a great synergy um, you have there. Even like lore wise, I love when when the cards make sense with what they do in the in the game. Yeah, there's so many great cards like that where you really feel like that it, it captured that moment in Final Fantasy. Where it's like the the character really comes through in the card's abilities, not just in the art. Yep. And and that's also true for Realm, which shows up again. So I think <laughs> she's a pretty popular card, huh? She she's definitely a popular card, and she's bringing her friend the Goblin again, um, to like go with like some sneaky damage. I think giving giving something haste, um, or just setting up some monsters for like Zidane probably like Goblin Zidane sounds pretty good for to me yeah and even the class fourth Moogle can bring in Goblin so oh, yeah, you don't too. necessarily for that one need realm um, but it's nice that you have a, a few different ways of playing it however for Unsaganashi you absolutely need realm I don't <laughs> see any other way to play it right um, other than just discarding one to play the other yeah that would be like the only other option there's nothing else I can see. Oh, wait, there's Gal. Oh, yeah, Gal could also bring it back. But let's take a look at deck number two, which is um, also someone you might have heard of. Kurosawa. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> really? I've never heard of him. The oh, wait, that's the world champion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he's bringing another um, self-damage list, but this time we're putting together all the colors, like lightning, water, and fire. Oh, so he's really bringing all the different, <coughs> all the different elements that like to play the self-damage thing, uh, pulling it together. Yeah, it's um, pretty similar to um, the. Uh, second match we've seen uh, where you uh, were doing lots of self damage and putting them on top of your deck like the 7 cost Odin with Lightning and Seymour but now you're using um, Ethereal Summoner to uh, do the same trick for you to get like the water summons and have the other cards to self damage Yes, yeah, so this is another one of those Fusoya without Fusoya lists, yeah. huh? Pretty much, which gives you the opportunity to run Sephiroth. And I mean, if you are having self damage, you want to run that card, I guess. Right. So we are having Morita san against Kageyama san there, which is the Battle of Giants. Both are really, really talented players, both coming from a magic background and they're both using world's competitor decks that is true as well so this is probably the most competitive match we will we will see today from all these series do you think they have picked the decks um as well based on like okay these are two people who submitted decks that are coming from worlds probably right i think so for this one it, o it only makes sense. If you see that Kurosawa is submitting a deck list for this, I mean, of course you want to show it, but I think you need someone else who 
can build a really strong world's competitive deck to put uh to pit it against yeah i mean speaking of um um shikadi which is christopher matisk and kurosawa um we will also see them in the influencer tournament at some point hopefully oh that's exciting so there we will not only see their decks but also them playing it so in case you guys have missed uh the influencer tournament uh go check it out on our youtube uh, and it's also shared on on facebook on the usual pages so you will easily find it um so have you seen what decks they're playing i think kageyama was playing the water one right i'm not sure i think so but i'm not sure yeah, he's playing the water. I've seen Goblin and Theodore. And Morita-san then is playing the tree color list with Kuja yeah. and... What's that? Is I think an ace in his hand? Yeah. So Kageyama-san is having a really nice start with two 2CP two backups and also having the Moogle that gives him fire CP. So... Goblin can be played. It's a really good start for him. So in the meantime, Morita-san is playing Even Seymour. Sorry. Even pitching the um, the Seador is early. It's pretty nice just because you can pull those out later. Yeah, just play them when you when you need it. I mean, you don't want to pay for CP for it. You want to dial your forwards and play it, I guess. Yep. So Morita-san just used Seymour to shuffle his deck. <laughs> he don't want it to search a summon because he's playing against water. There is no way of haste, probably. I mean, he could with the goblin, but he didn't find it necessary to put an EX on top. And Kageyama-san could have used the goblin to go for a sneaky point of damage there. But he decided to not to. In that situation, would you would you attack with uh, with the white mage? I mean, you draw. I think a card. I would rather. I think I would have rather, like, I'd rather save Goblin for a bigger play. I mean, he has another one in hand. I mean, two bigger plays. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would probably also keep it for like Zidane. I I think you really want to use it with Zidane. Well, White Mage got in and dealt a point of damage anyway. <laughs> with a little help by Kuja. So that's, I think, not the best thing you could have drawn. Just Rosa. And what was the other one? Cloud of Darkness? Can't really see. <laughs> she is pretty yeah. protected, though. Oh, they are... Goes the last goblin. Here's the other gob. <laughs> now we've seen all of them. <laughs> one in the break zone, one on the field, and one in the damage zone. Oh, Ooh, and go Gilgamesh. Crash. That's gonna be really annoying if you can't get rid of it. Yeah, yeah he's gonna have to do something about that right away. That's not a good draw there. I think that was another Cloud of Darkness and a Gao. And a Rosa he has in hand. So you really want that third backup because all your cards are odd. So Cloud of Darkness to reduce by 4k. Goblin. I think he's just digging for something. Yeah. And he 
didn't get it. So Gilgamesh is now on 3k, right? So even the Cagnazo he has drawn is not enough there. Is that a Cagnazo? I think it was. Uh, I think he's got another Cloud of Darkness and then... I think, I think that was a Cagnazo. I think that's a backup. That was a really unfortunate turn for kakeyama -san. Yeah. You really need that third backup in that list. Especially now Arasan can start using the Gilgamesh and modifying his deck. Put some summons on top with uh, with a 2 CP forward there. So Leviathan. There is also no X bust coming for him. Yeah, I think um, Kageyama Sun's pretty in trouble. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's really a way out of that. There is the Kagnazo now. If the last one was not one, there's one for sure now. <laughs> yeah, right. And you are right, it was a backup. He now has three. Which is great, but it could be too late because Maya can dull one and he has Leviathan in hand, right? So that's that's lethal. Yeah. Can yeah, I think this game's already over. You can discard the um the Porum, play Leviathan, and then even bring back the Porum on the Gilgamesh swing. Which is what he's doing now. Ooh, so that was a great Rosa special. So he revealed the top card of the deck. It was a water card and therefore he can activate all the forwards. So at least he's not dying. Now he can search for a standard unit, which is a white mage. Probably gonna have to let that one go through also. Yeah. I mean, you have to take one more and then you can block the other ones with Cloud of Darkness. Porum can't attack because Porum just entered the field. He's basically putting Kageyama san in check though because. His damage is getting ramped up, and with Porom there, being able to take back Leviathan, it's it's pretty over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he needs something on the board now to bring a Cagnazo to reduce the board by 4k, then swing to kill the Maya with 3k. So you need to play two forwards at least. One of them is Cagnazo. And he would need to have a total of eight water cards when he play the Cagnazo. That would be the optimal play now. The question is, does he have enough CP for that? So in five, then with this one we are on six. Cagnazo would be seven, so we short one card. He has one card then in hand, but can't play anymore. Oh, that's really unfortunate. He might as well swing with Cloud of Darkness, probably. Yeah. I mean, Cloud of Darkness could reduce by 4k. So, and you'd reduce by 3k. So it's still enough to kill the Maya. But it's not enough to get rid of the Ephiria Summoner as well, because it's only 3k. And you need to get rid of Maya, otherwise that's just a dull forward in your turn.
Oh, that cloud was not good for Kagiyama-san. Yeah, he can get rid of Kagnazo, right? Yeah. So that's like your blocker for the turn is now gone. Oh, gosh. I think that cloud lost him the game there. Because now... I mean, he's on five. Problem is, if he's losing one of his forwards, that's game. And he took back a Leviathan last turn with Porum. So, if he has, yeah, water he has CP, multiple ways. The question is, does he have water CP? Because I've seen lots of lightning cards in his hand. The thing is, he has Belias in hand, so he could just Belias the Porum. Oh, yeah, that, that's true. I don't think that's what he's doing, but... I mean, it would not be enough because Rosa can block both. I mean, you would lose the Rosa. Uh, so you... Yeah, you could you could Belias the Porom, swing in, take back Water CP, and then play Leviathan. Oh yeah, that works. If he has another Water Summon and breaks him, but I think he had. Okay, so now he's... Okay... He could have just played Belias attack with Porum anyway and also get rid of Rosa. Yeah. But he's just... I mean, now he has a backup, which is also fine. It's probably more safe <laughs> in case there's mm -hmm. like something else coming up. But Yeah, I mean, I guess he knows that Kageyama-san is out of haste because the goblins are all gone. Yep. So short of like getting Gao... Um, there's nothing that's really gonna hasten. So, Kageyama-san can now search for any forward. So he's taking the last Kagnazo, which is enough to kill a Porom, at least. But then it's the exact same situation again. Leviathan will just end your game. So... He decides to take Cecil instead. Which is a bit more safe because he can protect your Cloud of Darkness to um, make us survive a 9k attack. Um, Alright, so same situation. Pretty sure it's over. Yeah, and still no water CP in hand. <laughs> Just but he can still get it. it. Yeah, <laughs> there's this Leviathan there in the break zone if you attack with Purim. Exact same scenario like last turn. Oh, he's doing it the other way around now. He's Ethereal Summoner putting Water CP on top and then drawing it with Belias. Alright, he's still got there. <laughs> I mean, that's more show off. <laughs> <laughs> and now we finally have the Leviathan. <laughs> After three turns, the primal has awoken. And that is game there. I think Not really surprising, I guess, that the, <laughs> the world champions deck was kind of insane. <laughs> it was some like great synergies, but also some um, CP issues that you had to always like think outside the box. Like, how can I get my CP now this turn since I don't have like water CP? It could be the same with right. like, fire or lightning. So you always have to st think one step further. Uh, I, how can I modify my deck to get that? What do I have in the break zone? What can I put on top of my deck? How can I draw it? So that, there's a lot, a lot going on. Yeah, it, it is pretty low on backups. So it is kind of hoping that you can do a lot of that manipulation to 
get the right CP. Um, if you have one of those one of Moogles, you can color fix really easily. But um, because most of the packups are one ofs, it's it's really not likely that you're gonna you're gonna see more than two in a game. Yeah, I mean, this deck is only playing ten backups, I think. Right, it's ten. Yeah. And Ten backups, and a lot of them are one ofs. Yeah, all but Seymour. Seymour is a three of, and everything else is one. So that means even if you draw two Seymours, you can't play two backups. So in theory, you're having only seven backups. One has a higher chance to, to get drawn. <laughs> you don't need backups for EX bursts, so <laughs> I it, guess it's playing off that. It's also not having that many experts if you just count like the the total mm -hmm. so i see the clouds which is two then porum one off vivi one off so that's four seymour we're on seven belias 10 odin 12 poo poo 14 16 okay 18 back uh, 18 ex burst is a high number but not that high what you would expect in such a deck yeah, and but it, we still got to see them, and even that cloud kind of um, solidified the game for him. Yeah, the cloud was really, really good there. I think a major um, difference between the two decks um, is something on the CP cost. If you just look at this deck, most of the cards are even because mm -hmm. you're not having that many backups and you're not having that many resources you need to play way more with uh, using your hand cards as a resource to play and yeah. if we look at the other deck um, which was an issue that Kageyama-san had like during the whole game most of the cards were odd like lots of 3 CP cards um, that you don't really want to pay off just with cards in your hand yeah even the CP values of the cards in general are higher like not even just the fact that they're odd um kurosawa's deck has a lot of two cp cost cards whereas this one um lots of threes fours fives so i think that was like a, a big difference between them mm. it was two completely different type of decks there um Mm -hmm. in every aspect of how the decks are built like this deck has lots of um, three offs in the deck and um, only a few like situational cards um, while the other deck was way wider with the options it had with all the one offs there yeah this one wanted to do something really specific with Cecil and Rosa and unfortunately we didn't get to see it go off yeah I mean, there were there were moments where we had Rosa, we had Cecil, but we don't have them together. Yeah, they were never together. Yep. All right, what do you guys think about that? Uh, I hope you enjoyed that match. And I'm pretty sure many of you have tried Rosa and Cecil already. So let us know about your experience with that and if you would play this type of deck. Or if you would go with a more crazy version and uh, follow the steps of the world champion. I think that's it for now. Um, I think that's it. Unless you want to say something. Um, I mean, just echoing earlier, because we have these two world champions here. Or a world world competitors here. Um, to make sure to check them out in the Influencer Tournament um, so we can see them pilot their own decks. It would probably not be these decks, but I'm pretty sure they have something good in uh, planned for you guys. Yeah, I'm excited to watch. I mean, I was excited by these matches already, so let's see what the players are doing. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy our video series and see you the next time. Later.